In the year 1996, the Bureau of Paranormal Activities Area 72 Research Station saw one of the largest disasters in the history of extraterrestrial research. Located outside of the town of Mason, Ohio, the Area 72 compound, often referred to as Fort Mason, is one of the country's premier research labs. However, on that fateful April day, Fort Mason was anything but top class. The Bureau of Paranormal Activity got its start in 1886. That year, the organization set up its first research institute just outside of Cincinnati. It got its start investigating fringe cases and ghost rumors, but everything changed in 1937. That year, scientists at the Cincinnati site successfully launched the first Shooting Star, a prototype rocket designed several years even before the famous German V-2 rocket. The, the, the reason that they kept it secret is they they didn't want to become another wing of the military. Um, uh, we still use designs from Shooting Star, uh, although um, we brought in uh, contractors from Pennsylvania and the Rocky Mountains. Following the success of Shooting Star, the Bureau of Paranormal Activity began shifting its goals. A subsection of the Bureau decided to continue working on ways to investigate the paranormal activities of outer space. Resources would be reallocated to begin a new series of projects dubbed the Orion Sequence. Shooting Star would be the first of these, and it would continue development until 1971. In 1971, the Cincinnati branch of the Bureau was relocated slightly further from the city itself and over to the nearby town of Mason. This new research base, Area 72, opened in 1972. That year, the Bureau of Paranormal Activity was officially incorporated under a branch of the federal government. With the relocation came the dissolving of the Shooting Star program, but also the beginning of the Rotor Project, the second of the Orion sequence. The next few years saw some of the fastest developments in the Bureau's history. In just nine short years, look how far we've come. Started with just a scrappy group in Mason, we furthered work on the Orion sequence by an additional three sequence projects. Thanks to the federal incorporation, the Bureau has been able to establish new research facilities in Charlotte, Doswell, and even out west in Santa Clara. On this day, we are happy to bring our paranormal expertise to our friends in the north. With this new Fort Vaughn here just outside of Toronto, we look forward to seeing what new avenues of research we'll be able to explore. The next year saw significant advancements in not only the Mason branch, but the others as well. Starting in 1987, the Fort Mason branch began Sequence 6, dubbed the Vortex Sequence. This was the first one that became a collaborative effort between four out of the five branches. It began life in Mason in 1987 before being collaborated on by the Vaughn and Santa Clara branches in 1991. The following year saw the Charlotte Division join the project too. The Doswell branch was more focused on the International Jungle Expedition Project, and thus didn't partake in the Vortex sequence. Vortex would be the last Orion sequence project for some time. Mason had been shifting some of its efforts back into earthenly paranormal activity. The 1991 Adventure Express incident brought new attention back to the Miami River area, considered one of the largest paranormal regions in the world. Nowhere really quite compares to down here in the Miami River Valley. Um, uh, there's just so many different paranormal things that happen here. and um, There's a reason why the BPA is headquartered here. Early into 1995, however, everything would change for the Bureau of Paranormal Activity. In August of that year, unbeknownst to the wider world, a strange object had crash-landed near their old aircraft testing facility. Initial investigations revealed higher than typical radiation levels, as well as traces of space dust in the exterior hull. Mason and Doswell both went into a media blackout following this discovery. The next few months saw an unprecedented amount of radio silence from certain sectors of the BPA. Typically, the Mason branch loved to show off their achievements, but for the first time, nobody was talking about what was going down in the Miami River. 1996's budgetary meeting was the final nail for this level of secrecy. During that meeting, one of the Bureau's higher-ups snapped and accidentally revealed everything. After this meeting, the entirety of the US was in shock. A slip of the tongue had just accidentally answered one of the biggest questions in human history. We weren't alone in the universe. The BPA scrambled for the next few months to figure out a plan. They announced that on June 17th, there would be a day for representatives of the major media outlets to tour both the Mason and Doswell facilities and get a better understanding of the research. We figured it would just be better for people to 
just know rather than to speculate. Uh, plus, uh, the increased publicity would uh, help us uh, keep our budget intact for the next few years. The preparations were set up and soon enough, June 17th arrived. It was time for, as the employees called it, Flight F-34R. The media piled in and the tour started off as a smashing success. Members of the press were welcomed in to explore parts of the BPA's past, such as parts from different projects in the Orion sequence, the Bureau's present work within some of their field research divisions, and their future, with the star of the show being the hangar. I'll still never forget being able to actually see that craft in person. They wouldn't let us touch it, but you could definitely smell it. It smelled like a penny, but like a massive penny. The first group went off without a hitch. This press event was surely to be a great boon for the Bureau. June 17th, 1.18 p.m., Fort Mason, Ohio. During the tour of the second group of reporters, a small fire broke out in the facility. Assuming it was a potential attack, the Mason Center was sent into lockdown temporarily. During the panic, one reporter was able to sneak away into the F hangar. The details of what went down in the hangar are unfortunately unknown. At approximately 1.26 p.m., a blackout occurred in Hangar F in the adjoining building. The cause of this is unknown, but the testimonies of those on that day begin to paint a picture of what could have happened. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll never really quite forget that. Uh, I was examining the, the metal that uh, the craft was made out of, and uh, they made me shut down the computers. I only had a, a little bit of time to do so before the power went out, though. I was cleaning up a beaker that someone had dropped in the initial panic when the blackout happened. Someone in the room thought it must have been a terrorist attack alongside the fire. At the time, his fear seemed validated as only a few seconds after the blackout, we heard a loud rumbling coming from the direction of the hangar. The noises coming from the hangar just lengthened the lockdown period. It wouldn't be until 4.30 p.m., three hours later, that the lockdown was finally lifted. The third group of reporters ended up being cancelled for both branches. In the aftermath, scientific instruments around where the Mason craft was appear to have unique burn marks on them. It was later ruled that the only thing that could have produced burn marks of that structure was the spacecraft's own thrusters. The running theory nowadays is uh, that the reporter uh, got in the craft and just fired up the controls and just, yeah, just, it went. <laughs> How he did so, it, we'll never know. Um, but uh, ever since, we've never been able to start the DAWs well. Uh, the running joke is that uh, the reporter was the best scientist that we've ever had at the Bureau. In the aftermath of the flight of F-34R, the Bureau of Paranormal Activity went back into secrecy, although this time, it was seen as being more warranted. The projects on the still remaining craft were completed in 2001. The Doswell branch went on to use their research on the project in their short-lasted hypersonic XLC program, whereas Mason got back to work a few years earlier. Work began again in Mason in 1999 for their new Invertigo program. The Mason branch's craft has never reappeared. Some believe it's off in the far cosmos, while others believe it may have exploded or burned up after leaving the hangar. The legacy of F-34R runs both deep in Mason and Doswell. You can barely get done saying Bureau of Part without someone chiming in about their sister's uncle, brother-in-law that was working the same day of the incident. Whatever may be of that craft nowadays, it, alongside many other rumors and incidents, have cemented the Bureau of Paranormal Activity and the Miami River Valley especially as the place to go for all things unexplainable. <laughs>